Welcome to today's episode of the Voice of Revival podcast. Are you ready to experience everything that God has for you? Are you ready for something relevant, raw, and refreshing? Well, leave the mundane behind you and let's get ready because this is the place where miracles still happen. Now, here's your host, Chad McDonald. Hello and welcome to the Voice of Revival podcast. I'm so excited that you have tuned in with us yet again for this episode here on the Voice of Revival podcast. And I am Chad McDonald, your host. I want to thank all of our listeners out there for tuning in to the Voice of Revival podcast and for supporting and making this worldwide ministry so very possible. So thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Now get ready. We're going to get in to this episode of the Voice of Revival podcast. You know, the last several episodes we've been dealing with the topic of demons and deliverance and with excerpts from my newest book, we've been discussing and talking about a, a lot of issues out of my newest book, Casting Out Devils, a handbook for moving in the supernatural power of deliverance. Uh, it's my newest book that I've written. Um, it just came out literally just a few months ago, and it's been so very popular, and it deals with the topic of spiritual warfare, but most importantly, demons and deliverance ministry. Um, the topic of deliverance ministry is often a neglected, neglected topic in the body of Christ. There are individuals who um, altogether um, oppose it or altogether um, shy away from it. They take the ostrich standpoint where they bury their head in the sand and act like demons don't exist, act like people aren't in bondage to evil spirits, or they act like it only happens on the faraway foreign fields. And Well, it doesn't just happen much here. They couldn't be farther from the truth. In fact, as we talked about in the previous episodes, Jesus thought deliverance was such an important integral part of his ministry that over one-third of all of his commandments to his disciples in regards to their mandate to deal with individuals, more than one-third of his commandments to the disciples dealt with the commandment to cast out devils. Deliverance ministry is so very needed in the world and in the age that we live in today. As a matter of fact, we have never been in a season or in an era on this planet where we have been in more need of deliverance ministry than we are now. You see, often we have taken the approach when it comes to deliverance where we have not properly dealt with the root or the demon spirit behind the issue. And so, you know, it, it reminds me of the, the instance when I first moved into to my home, one of my first homes, and I had become obsessed with my grass, and I wanted to have the best grass in the entire neighborhood. So I had tirelessly watered it for hours in the morning and in the evening, and I wanted to have golf course-style grass, and I surely did have golf course-style grass. But then I had a very serious problem because I seemed to have the issue with that nemesis called crabgrass. It kept springing up into my yard and I couldn't figure out exactly what was going on. And so I had to get these things out. And so at first I took the lazy approach by just mowing over it. And soon I realized that you could just mow over it and get rid of it rather quickly, except for about three days later, that crabgrass began to sprout back up again and it would sprout back up in greater numbers because when you would mow through it, it would chop the, chop the crabgrass up with the blade, but it would kick spores out into your grass. And so you would actually begin to spread it when you would mow over it and it would never be a, temp uh, never be a permanent solution, just a temporary fix. And then it would just sprout right back up three to four days later and you would be in a worse predicament than before. In order to remove the crabgrass, I finally realized that I had to properly treat the root. You have to you have to deal with root weed killer and you have to treat the root and kill the root of the crabgrass so that it can be permanently removed. Deliverance ministry is the very same way. Often individuals don't deal with the root of an issue. Often we deal with only surface issues. Perhaps the surface issue is depression. Perhaps the surface issue is anxiety. And so we'll just treat that surface issue, maybe with medication or we'll treat it with other type of topical treatments. And we don't deal with the spirits behind that. Uh, perhaps maybe the, the issue could be pornography addiction or it could be um, some other type of, of an issue with anger or unforgiveness. And we only deal topically 
with the result and not with the root. You've got to deal with the root, not the result. If you get the root right, the result will follow through. But oftentimes when dealing with deliverance ministry, we just mow through. We don't properly deal with the root. That's why individuals can repeat programs, you know, for example, for um, addiction over and over. And, and they'll go through the program and they'll get back and they'll do, do great for a short period of time. And then before too long, they find themselves back in that revolving door. Why? Because the root was not properly dealt with. And when it comes to deliverance, you've got to deal with the demon. The demon is the root or the demons are the root and they have to be properly dealt with. And deliverance is the mechanism that God ordained to deal with the very demonic roots in the lives of individuals is in fact Jesus Christ came to deliver the oppressed he said in Luke 4 18 the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor to set at liberty them that are bruised that actually means in the Greek to set at liberty them that are crushed down or oppressed to preach deliverance to the captives Jesus came to set the captives free those that are in the bondage, in the clutches of darkness. And so we've talked in, in the previous episodes of this podcast, different entry points and entry ways that, that demons are granted access into the lives of believers. And we talked about, I, I discussed three of the major entry points um, that demons are granted access. However, those are not the only entry points, but three of the major entry points, and I'll recap them again, sexual sin, sexual immorality. Um, uh, and inside that entry point or that access point or that portal of sexual sin, you know, it includes adultery, it includes fornication, it includes homosexuality, it includes different types of inordinate behavior and lust and, and unclean fantasies. And, you know, it's important when we're dealing, uh, understand this, if you're doing something sexually that makes you feel unclean, or you're doing something sexually that makes you feel ashamed, okay? There's a high probability that what you're doing then is wrong. And it's the Spirit of God dealing with you in that area. So, but demonic entry points, you know, you have the sexual sin entry point, number one. Number two is the drug abuse or drug addiction entry point. Um, and then number three is the occult entry point. Uh, people that deal with occultic items and they're involved in, in the underworld. They're involved with, um, you know, in seances and astrology and tarot cards and witchcraft. And um, perhaps you've brought items into your home that, you know, that are associated, that are considered to be accursed things that are associated with um, the realm of darkness. You know, for example, uh, yoga and, for example, um, spirit catchers and, and all kind of different items uh, whether or not you intend for it to be used in that manner or whether or not you meant for it to be a certain... Demons don't care if you mean for it. If it belongs to them, you've gained, you've granted them access point or entry point. And so you have those three major areas. And most people that are in need of deliverance, most people that have been involved in activities that have lent them to need to be delivered, and most people that, that need to be delivered... Most of the time, they have engaged in one of those three major entry points or are actively engaging in those entry points. Um, individuals that are involved in deep Satanism or deep occultism, things like that, usually incorporate all three of those major entry points. Sexual sin is always a part of rituals. Um, drug, drug use is always a part of those rituals. And so those are the three major entry points, but they are not the only entry points um, uncrucified flesh wherever you have uncrucified flesh in the life of a believer it will always lend to a demon spirit being behind that not far from that anywhere you can show anywhere i anywhere there is un unrepentant and uncrucified flesh in the life of an individual okay there will always be demon power not far behind Demon power thrives in the uncrucified flesh. We're called to live and be led by the Spirit. And in fact, the fruit of the Spirit, there are nine fruit of the Spirit. And then the Bible goes on to list the works of the flesh. Well, and then the Bible 
scriptures continue to, you know, for example, now the works of the flesh are these adultery and fornication and lasciviousness and hatred and anger and variance and strife and, and murder and witchcraft and all of those things that the Galatians lists out as being the works of the flesh or in other words, the manifestations of uncrucified flesh. In fact, they are manifestations of demonic activity in the life of an individual. And so there are several different types of entry points, but I want to talk specifically about the entry point of unforgiveness because unforgiveness is a major access point in the life of an individual that will throw wide open the door to demonic activity in the life of people. Un Jesus, Jesus tells us about unforgiveness in Matthew chapter 18, I believe it's verse 44, when he was giving the parable of the man who had been forgiven a large debt. And then that man had been forgiven a large debt, and then he had lent to someone, and that individual was not able to pay his debt back on time. And that, and that man who had been forgiven the large debt, who had a debtor himself, was unwilling to forgive the individual who he had lent to. And because of that, the king who had originally forgave the man with the larger debt found out about the wickedness of this man. And the Bible says in Matthew 18, verse 44, Jesus said, and the man came, the king was wroth, and he took that man who was unforgiving, and he th turned him over to the tormentors and threw him in prison. Jesus was using a story or an allegory to describe the nature of unforgiveness. Well, the tormentors, in fact, are demon spirits. The tormentors are unclean spirits. And so when we are unwilling to forgive, we are turned over, in essence, to the tormentors. And the tormentors are demonic spirits in, in the lives of individuals. And so when, we, when people have been unwilling to forgive. You have to understand this when it comes to forgiveness. Forgiveness does not require you to be right or wrong. Forgiveness makes no distinction between whether or not you're the victim or not. You can be, you can be justly abused. You can, or for example, you may have been the victim. You may have a reason to have truly been hurt. Someone may have done something horrible to you. However, that no matter how horrible it is, it does not negate the mandate and the requirement that you have to forgive. Now, you can forgive an individual and then not yield yourself to continue abuse. You can forgive an individual and walk away from them. You can forgive an individual and leave an abusive relationship, but you have to still forgive. You cannot harbor unforgiveness in your life and in your spirit. And so what happens is demon spirits exploit unforgiveness. They exploit unforgiveness in the, in the sense and in the way that when an individual has been abused or have had horrible trauma done to them, that individual sometimes begins to harbor unforgiveness. And they harbor it and they begin to justify it by saying, well, you know, I was wrong. Someone stole from me. They abused me. They did uh, such and such to me. And, and I am right to harbor a grudge and to harbor hatred towards that individual because after all, they hurt me and therefore I am entitled to not forgive them. They don't deserve my forgiveness. Unforgiveness is an offense to God because God sent his only son to be nailed to a tree for you, to be nailed to the cross for you, to be beaten and to be bruised and to be battered and, and to give his life a ransom for many. God sent his only son to pay the penalty for your forgiveness and my forgiveness and the entire world's forgiveness when we did not deserve it. And so when we refuse to forgive others, we are offending God as if we are saying to God, we are more important than his son because if Jesus could find it in himself to forgive us, we have to therefore be able to forgive others. That's why when Jesus was teaching the disciples to pray and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he said, okay, when you pray, say, forgive us our debtors as we forgive those who have debted against us or forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And Jesus goes on to say, for if you do not forgive those who have sinned against you, my father in heaven will not forgive your sins. There is no ifs, ands, or buts in that. And so when we refuse 
to, un- to be forgiving. And when we are harboring unforgiveness, we open up the door to the tormentors, to demonic activity in the lives of individuals. And demon spirits are masters at exploiting hurt. They are masters at exploiting um, issues of trauma and areas. As a matter of fact, one of the ways that demons get in many times is because of severe trauma in the life of an individual and sometimes through childhood. You know, a child will be horribly abused or horribly tormented by an individual and then they'll that that torment and that abuse actually opens up their spirit to resentment and to anger and to frustration and and to bitterness and unto unforgiveness. And so that that entryway of trauma actually throws open their spirit. That's why individuals that are often abused as children grow up later to be abusers. Why? Because they have actually been afflicted with that very same spirit because of harboring um, different levels of unforgiveness and different levels of hurt. And so those spirits that were on the abuser have now gotten into them and then they grow up to repeat that very same cycle. And so it's very important that we deal with unforgiveness in our lives. Often, uh, you, you know, when we're, when we're, I could tell you time and time again of individuals that, that have dealt horribly, horribly dealt with anger and bitterness and, and frustration and anger at, at, at the abuse that's happened to them as a child through a parent. And they, they grow up in life harboring that unforgiveness and that unforgiveness becomes a root system in their life and demon spirits attach itself to them and then your quality of life goes down because you're actually being overthrown or overtaken by the tormenting spirits and so those spirits are granted access through unforgiveness and they'll come into an individual and they'll end up afflicting that individual with anxiety and with depression and with suicidal thoughts and you open up and 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 the anger issues and 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 it just spirals downhill unforgiveness the root of unforgiveness has to be pulled out it has to be pulled out by the spirit of god and the power of the name of jesus christ and you can be delivered and free from unforgiveness please don't allow unforgiveness to open up access in your life many of you listening to this podcast are dealing with things in your life because there are areas and there are individuals that you have refused to to forgive There are individuals that have legitimately harmed you and you have suffered wrong by them, but you've, you have been unwilling to forgive them and you've held on to that root of bitterness and that root of unforgiveness and that root of bitterness and unforgiveness has opened up demonic activity in your life. It, it's, it'll, it will destroy your health. It will destroy, it, it will destroy your physical life and it will eventually destroy your spirit. It will destroy you. You have got to forgive. And when I'm telling you right now by the Spirit of God, when you choose to forgive that individual, you will be shutting that access point that the enemy has been granted in your life. You will shut that access point. He will not be able to have that root system. If you pull the root system of unforgiveness out of your life, I'm telling you right now, anxiety and depression will all, those spirits will all have to leave when the, when you, choose to forgive so don't allow don't allow the root of unforgiveness unforgiveness is one of the greatest areas of demonic access in the life of an individual and demons will come in and exploit those areas of unforgiveness in the life of an individual and then and then the the individual begins to justify their suffering they begin to justify the unforgiveness and then what happens is misery breeds company And those individuals often enjoy being around other miserable individuals. But you've got to break that root system. And deliverance, deliverance is the mechanism that God intended to use for you to be delivered. So I pray right now by the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. I take authority over unforgiveness in the lives of those of you listening right now. I I speak right now to someone listening to this podcast and you were abused as a young girl. You were abused verbally by a mother. You were abused physically. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I take authority over that foul spirit of unforgiveness. I break your power, devil, and I command you, come out of the people in the name of Jesus Christ. I set you free by the power of God in Jesus' name. Be free 
and be delivered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I take authority right now over the spirit of unforgiveness that's been operating in the life of an individual. You've been bound by depression. You've been bound by anxiety and even suicidal thoughts. And you've thought recently, within the last 72 hours, about taking your life. I curse that spirit now in Jesus' name, and I command you, devil, you come out of them in Jesus' name. Be delivered right now. I command spirits of unforgiveness, come out. Come out in Jesus' name. You spirits of depression, suicidal thoughts, you foul, unclean spirit, loose those people now. Come out of them in Jesus' name and be delivered now in the name of the Lord of glory, Jesus Christ. And Father, I release the kingdom of God right now into the lives of the listeners in Jesus' name. May they be strengthened and equipped now by the power of God. So I want to encourage you, don't allow... Un, the root of unforgiveness to take hold in your life. Amen. And if you haven't gotten a chance to get my newest book, Casting Out Devils, a handbook for moving in the supernatural power of deliverance, you can find that book on our website at www.revivalfirewm. That's revivalfirewm.com. Go to the website, click on the store link, and you can find that book listed there. Or you can go to thevoiceofrevival.com. It's thevoiceofrevival.com. Same website. The URLs are just linked together. Go to the store. You can find Casting Out Devils, a handbook for moving in the supernatural power of deliverance. It is available there for you on our website. There is no shipping charge if you purchase it through our ministry store. I want to thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Voice of Revival podcast because it is truly your faithful support that enables this ministry to be worldwide and to touch those all the way around the world. I'm so very excited um, for what God has in store for you. God has a plan and a destiny for you. He has a plan and a destiny for your life. God has ordained you to be a vessel of revival. He has ordained you to be a carrier and a catalyst of his glory. So I want to encourage you by the power of the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be equipped. Be equipped to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. Be equipped in the name of Jesus Christ. I love you and I thank you so much. So visit our website, RevivalFireWM.com. And check out check out our ministry store there. It will bless your life. And while you're there, you know, consider sowing into this ministry. The Voice of Revival is a media ministry outreach of Revival Fire World Ministries. Revival Fire World Ministries, we are dedicated to taking the gospel of Jesus Christ and the demonstration and power of the Holy Spirit to the ends of the earth. We are planning several major miracle crusades still yet even in the midst of this COVID-19 stuff we are planning um, a, a ministry crusade miracle crusade trip to, to Haiti late this summer we're going to go back to Africa and I'm going to go God willing we're working on getting back into Pakistan before the end of this year so if you want to be a blessing to the ministry consider sowing um, a financial seed into this ministry you can do so at revivalfirewm.com go on the website there and click give now Make sure you pick up a copy of the book. I love you and God bless you. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Voice of Revival podcast with Chad McDonald. The Voice of Revival is a media ministry outreach of Revival Fire World Ministries. For books and resources or to let Chad know how today's episode has blessed you, be sure to visit us on the web at www.thevoiceofrevival.com and follow Chad on social media at Revival Fire WM.